Good morning. Pastor Sean here on Friday, November 27th with your morning prayer. So let us begin. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. Our text for today is uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, the first 12 verses. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who are elect exiles of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, and the sanctifi- sanctification of the Spirit, for obedience to Jesus Christ, and for sprinkling with his blood, may grace and peace be m- multiplied to you. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has, caused us, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials so that the de- tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes through its tested, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not know, uh, now see him, you believe in him, and rejoice that with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of, the f- of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who prophesied about the, uh, about the grace that was to be yours searched and inquired carefully, inquiring what, uh, what person or time the Spirit of Christ in them was indicating when he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the subsequent gl- glories. I can't talk today. It was revealed to them that they were serving not themselves, but you, and the things that have now been announced to you through those who preached the good news to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things into which angels long to look. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets, but now in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. Okay. So we get right into 1 Peter now. Um, so the, you know, this is basically just the introduction to his letter, you know, greeting, uh, greeting the, um, the people, uh, the recipients of the letter, and then um, just gets into kind of a, a general exhortation of blessing and um, thanksgiving for um, what they've been through for their, uh, well, essentially for their faith. Um, and the first part is what they've been through on account of their faith. And then um, for what, um, for what they've received um, and, and the long kind of the long line of uh, the faith that has been passed down through the, through um, from their, forefathers and from the, the prophets in, in the time of the, of, uh, the Old Testament. So, in the first uh, part, where he's talks, he uh, has this little text here, where is it? Um, oh, in this you rejoice, uh, verse 6, in this you rejoice, though for now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials. So, um, we get this, you know, we are, we're able to rejoice, when, when we have trials and, and, and sufferings and afflictions, um, in fact, in, uh, in our Thanksgiving Eve service, part of the liturgy was um, a, a litany, a prayer, in which we were thankful for our sufferings, that, that God was pleased to give us, um, which is sometimes a hard hard thing to say and then put out there, you know, the idea that, well, first of all, that God gives us sufferings, um, but there's something to be thankful for, 
because of course who wants to suffer but um the uh, text that we have today indicates that you know the um necessity of of trials in our lives is is to um to kind of refine our faith to to purify it in like uh, as as gold is purified through fire um and it is so that we to to bring us closer to god you know in in here uh peter uses the um uses the term where is it uh, so that the tested genuineness of your faith and um so the idea behind this is that what happens with trials is that it it causes if if we are truly you know if we have faith what that hap- when what happens then is that we're drawn towards god um because we know that he is the only one to whom we can turn to in trials and and afflictions and certainly you know we we've all been through times where we've we've suffered and of course we turn to ourselves we can get through this um we can see ourselves through we can handle it whatever and um the problem is is that if if we just rely on ourselves if we if we turn inward and say i can i can deal with this myself and we manage to get through it or at least we think that we've we've gotten through it um you know, we, we've pushed God aside. We, we said, oh, no, I can handle this. I, I've got this. And so we, we, we start to turn away from him. So the idea is that in any trial or affliction, we turn towards God. And so that way, um, you know, we are turning to him first. We are um, relying on him. We're trusting in him. And the, the focus of our faith, our life, our, everything is in God. And so this is something to rejoice about, that we should be glad about. Um that uh, this is the result of our faith that because we even though we haven't seen him we love him you know and, and we believe in him because he has brought us through these things when we could not and uh i mean we can usually get through easy things <laughs> minor things fairly well by ourselves but uh, certainly the big things it's just we can't do it um so that's the first part, and ooh, kind of run short on time here. The second part is is talking about how um, you know the prophets prophets who prophesied about the grace that was to be yours, um, and so he's talking about how the, the the prophets and the people that came before you, you know, they were they were looking to the time and and, and uh, the the spirit of Christ in them, so they believed in the, in the promise and had faith in in Jesus even before he was there. Um, we're waiting, you know, waiting for the time when, when his sufferings would be revealed to them and they would see it made manifest. And, uh, we have, we're on the other side of that. And so basically the, what this all serves to do is to connect us with this long line of faith. Um, so kind of matching with the, the, the trials and afflictions that we suffer, we don't go through them alone. Um, certainly because God is with us, but also because we have, we have this faith that has been handed down through the generations and connects us with a whole body of believers. Um, and, you know, so they were the, the, the prophets of the Old Testament and, and the, the great patriarchs of, of the Old Testament and all the people who had faith in, in what God was doing and, and who God was sending. Um, you know, they, they passed down the preaching for you. Um, that this was everything that they were doing and everything with, that they were setting in motion and preparing was in anticipation, not only for the Messiah, but for you so that you would receive this. Um, as kind of a, a nice little thing to think about, uh, especially as you're reading through the old Testament and, you know, the things people are doing and saying and realizing that, you know, you're not disconnected from all that. You are a part of that, um, that ongoing narrative of the people of God. Um, and so it, it, it does kind of help if you're feeling alone, if you're feeling like, um, you know, that there's, it's just kind of like that feeling you're out on an island and nobody's around and, and you're just, this is just you in the world. It's like, it's not that. I mean, Christ is with you, of course. Um, but you have the, you have the whole church, you have the whole, uh, body of, of believers, um, going all the way back to Adam and Eve, uh, who are, who have done all things and, and to push forward and, and send forth the proclamation of the gospel to you. So a little bit deep today. Um, hopefully not too deep for 
day after Thanksgiving. <laughs> if we're all tired from overeating, whatever. All right. Well, that's about my time for today. So let us pray. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, you've safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all of our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope uh, this is a, a blessing to you that uh, gives you something to uh, think about, to meditate on, and certainly to give you um, a great measure of comfort. So, <laughs> peace be with you.